for Nutrien um, here in a little bit of a windy Bacchus Marsh, but uh, catching up with Shannon Nixon from Nixon Bloodstock. Firstly, Shane, hello. G'day, Paul. Thanks for coming out. It's uh, first time that you've visited, so it's good to have you here. I've driven past this place quite a few times, but yeah. um, it's actually quite central. And we'll get to that in the end as well, yeah. but um, it is a little bit of a windy day here. Been a very, very wet drying year. Have you got some feed around you at the minute? Yeah. Look, it's one of those things where you sort of feel a bit guilty talking about how good the season was because there's been so much bloody, you know, carnage and, and heartache for people who have suffered from the rain. We, I mean, we've had a lot of water around here, but, I mean, I guess the consequence of it or the upside is that, yeah, the feed's abundant, which is always good when you've got horses. And Parwin's not always, you know, they've got the sort of this time of year, often by December or Christmas time, a lot of the feed's turned. But, yeah, it's been a really good season for growing horses, that's for sure. It has indeed. Now, you've got four horses going through the nutrient sale this year. You had last year off, Shane. You, how did you enjoy last year having a, having a year off with no yearlings? Yeah, it was good. It was good because, as you know, with um, uh, you know, it's such a busy time of year and it's also the time of year when you might want to relax or socialise or go away on a break or something like that, particularly with your family. Sorry, Paul, I'm a bit distracted right. by this bugger. Um, yeah, so it was good. I didn't miss it. I miss the excitement, the adrenaline that you get of being involved on the sales day and the sale weekend is awesome. And also the satisfaction. And then autumn or summer prepping yearlings, well, outside of a long day in the field in cricket, it's the best beer you'll have is the beer you have at the end of a day prepping yearlings, I reckon. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fair analogy, I will say. Yeah, having a little bit of fun here with these boys. Uh, actually, this bloke right here in the, in the middle, probably fair to say your flagship of your draft this year going through yeah. Melbourne sale um, he's going to be a very sought after a colt of course he's a captain treacherous out of Carla's Pixel Carla Pixel's first fault um, and offers some real intrigue one when you look at the pedigree page it's a cross that's already worked you and I spoke loosely about that there before but just a high quality man one of the best mares we've produced um, here in Australia um, what she was able to do on the racetrack and this next chapter for, from your family for a start you must be so excited about it and then to be offering up this first yearling yeah nah it's exciting Paul because um, to be honest with you like Carla's Pixel's the reason I'm doing it still probably you know it's we've had a few hard years at the sales and she was just such a wonderful mare to have around uh, credit to Rob Watson you know he's bred some amazing stock over the years and Dean Braun you know just managed her really well through her racing career so to go and be able to present her yearlings at the sales and to get a colt like this first up out of you know captain um yeah uh, it's pretty it's pretty cool I won't say um, I'm a little bit nervous about keeping him in one piece you know for the next four months but um yeah, it's good to have something that has really turned out as you could poss you know, as well as you could hope. And you can see he's got a lovely temperament. Like he's just walked up to us. We have got the camera. We'll be cheeky. We have got the camera on the other side of a fence because it didn't stand a hope. There was no chance yeah. with with that being out here with him. But he's just got a lovely temperament. Yeah, he's going to get a lot of people looking, a lot of people asking. There's probably going to be a lot of people saying, "Why are you selling him?" Um, but effectively, you are a seller. Like this is this is what you do now. You don't race uh, that many. You might race the odd filly from time to time, but effectively, the boys go to the mar they go to the sales. They go on go on the market. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, over the I've been probably selling yearlings for 15 or yeah, probably 15 years, maybe a touch longer, Paul. Um, the Colts always, you know, always go there to sell. If I'm going to put in the effort of yearling prep. They're not going there as a you know for a um, a box ticking exercise. They're going there to sell. Um, I've kept one filly this year, a little American ideal filly out of our Femme Fatale, but otherwise the other four I've got are all going to the sales. Um, yeah, so they're there for sale. And previously, obviously, I've advertised my um, reserves the last few years as well, so people know you know what's happening. They can go and inspect them with confidence to know if they've got what my reserve is. They're a chance to buy it. So yeah. And mainly the main reason for the Alfam Fatal one, um, just you know, basically not quite commercial at the minute. You need some of the progeny to start hitting the ground and and doing something. So you're better off looking after and try and manage it yourself. Maybe get her to be the you know the, the good bread and butter horse or the good race winning horse for her. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, she's tiny, so that's usually a bit of a knock straight away once you front up at the sales. Um, and and yeah, Mum. At the moment, it's not sort of something that she's she hasn't left left us anything yet. And it's one of those little personal projects where I just think oh she was too good of a horse and she's too competitive out here in the paddock and with us not to leave us something with her fight and her spirit so I reckon I'll just stick with the fem stock for a little while and we'll see if this little filly can be the first to go good for it right you got you've actually got three going to Melbourne but we're going to go to the Sydney one first because that's his best that doesn't want to leave you alone betting line um going to Sydney the rationale between you know sending this bloke up to Sydney um Jake Stockton's going to prepare him for you yep. um at Wingate there in, in Wagga, but he'll, the, the rationale behind sending him to Sydney? Uh, 
pure and simple alphabet, Paul. Um, I think he would have been in the first 10 or 15 lots at Melbourne, and I'm not sure that... Um, uh, I, I just think the market, unless you're one of the top lots early on, it can be a little bit harder. I reckon he's the type of horse where people might sit back and see how the sale's going. So I just really rolled the dice on thinking that he might have a better chance, you know, in Sydney. <laughs> yeah. The other boy, you hold your hand out and he just nuzzles it. This bloke, he, yeah. you, get, you get the whole full mouth, but yeah. he's a lovely type. Um, they're starting to hit the ground now, the betting lines, which, um, and he's a beautifully bred horse himself, betting line. So, I mean, he's got a lot of upside. Um, so are all the sons of betters delights. They're starting to do it, which yeah. is great too as well. Yeah, it is. Look, I reckon the, that he's been, he has been a bit maligned, betting line. I mean, you can't tell the market what they should and shouldn't buy, but the fact is that he has, um, you know, he hasn't been the most sought after at the sales. So, you know, now that he has left a few nicer horses and nice types, uh, and look, he's out of a really a mare that was really good. She went third in a Vic bred, uh, Trinity Dreaming, and yeah, from one of our good families. So yeah, hopefully he's uh, uh, got a bit of interest. And and Jake, I mean Jake's you know one of the best in the business in turning them out on sale day. So I reckon I've given him a pretty nice animal to start off with, but he'll be getting plenty of credit if he can sell him for me up there. And we encourage people to get to Wagga, New South Wales. There is going to be lots of going on. Rock and roll Hanover um, out the back too. Lovely bred horse. It's all. Oh no, that's a New Zealand family. I was going to say just all left my mind at the minute. Yeah. Um, but it is uh, the New Zealand family. Franco Ledger uh, very closely related to him. So he's going to be getting in and out of the box quite a bit. That little fella. Yeah. Well, he's the only rock and roll Hanover foal born in Australia last season. So he's pretty scarce like that. And then being out of an arts place mare. Um, look, I've been up trying to achieve this, as in to get a colt with that that cross for probably eight or nine years. I've got two full sisters to him, um, and uh, yeah, so and there was no semen left this year, so that's the he'll be the last um, yeah rock and roll handover in Australia unless someone gets can source some semen in New Zealand and bring one over. But yeah, I really like the colt. He hasn't got the um, you know, probably the, the height of these guys, but he's a real nice type of horse. And um, as much as he seems shy, he's not shy. He just doesn't want to come over here and play second fiddle to the big boys. <laughs> this bloke's a pest, but he's a lo he's got so much personality, I must say. Um, and he's, he's a lovely horse. One filly um, in in the sale as well. Um, and it's, it's a, like, it's a lo she's a lovely type. She's yeah. not in this paddock, obviously, uh, but she's a lovely type. Very, very strong built filly. Um, you must be so excited to be offering her up. Yeah, very up. Major filly out of the stunning one and um uh she's just i, I love that mare um i've got a, a sun beach filly that i kept that's in work with albie ashwood at the moment and um and uh it's rising too and this filly here it's a real nice type Not a lot of art major about her but um yeah i'm really excited to be presenting her yeah i said there before there's a golden cross it's the art major better's delight but then, of course, Dave Miles, he wanted to be tuning into this, the cla that classic Gary. But, I mean, classic Gary, the job that he done in Australia, he was a much maligned horse. I mean, a lot yeah. of people didn't weren't wrapped in him for the attitudes that he, he left in the horses. But when you actually looked at this, what he was able to do, he left sires, left broodmares as well later on. I mean, he is yeah. a he's a champion horse. And then you have, actually have that blue, bread, cro blue blood cross of the art major yeah. <laughs> over, 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 the, over the better's delight. So, I mean, and that adds a fair bit of excitement about it. Yeah. Yeah, look, you're right about the classic Gary. Like, I, um, he was probably before my, well, as a racehorse, he was certainly before my time. But then, as a stallion, his time had sort of passed. But I've got this, um, I had classic Kathy, um, and she just put speed into everything. She's the dam of Phoenix Prince, of course. And, um, and her temp, she wasn't the easiest horse to be around, which is a bit of a classic Gary trait. Um, and, so Shane, we've done a quick re relocate. Anyone wondering, it is not technically a technical problem, just a little thing that I've found out a glitch with one of my cameras, but that's okay. And we've we've moved. This is the stunning yeah. one now, so which is good. So people get to see her, um, see her for her height and what sort of a lovely build of filly she is. Yeah, and a good eye too. She um, no, it was actually convenient. <laughs> no, this is the art major filly we were I was glowing about out of the stunning one. So yeah, Scout again, she's really nice. This isn't a classic Gary thing. We we're talking about classic Gary. Classic Gary mares wouldn't let you come near him like this. No, <laughs> well, that's like exactly what we, we were talking about. And, yeah. and yeah, one thing I will say, all your horses are so friendly. You enjoy that part. You enjoy your horses, don't you? Yeah, it's some, one of those things, Paul, as you, I guess, you get older, you get better at it. And without sounding all kumbaya, I think the older you get to, the more in touch you become with animals and, and na nature, I, I think. Anyway, well, that's what's happening, you know, with me. It just, I think we're really, really lucky to live in this country and to live around animals and horses are just such a beautiful creature. I didn't always feel that way when I was probably under more time pressure. 
that when it was more of a job, I guess. Um, it still is a job if you're watching Megan. <laughs> <laughs> she'll be watching don't worry she'll be critiquing um, everything which is good and it is a, it is a family affair for you guys um, we, you, we want people to come here and have a look you guys are going to go off on you know, a great family trip which I think is terrific you'll be back early in the new year though and we want people to come out here and have a look at these horses in their natural environment which is one of the things we were talking about Clayton Tonkin's huge on it um, and so are a lot of the people come here and see them in their natural environment before they start getting ready for the sales yeah yeah, no, for sure. We're back mid-January and, um, yeah, um, just it's a good opportunity, I think, for purchasers to just adds adds that information. You've got to go to the sales. It's very competitive to try to get the horses you want. So anything you can see that maybe others can't and that is uh, it's going to give you an advantage, I guess. Or I just think, like I said before, that they all look great on sale day. Uh, very hard to fold them and you can look at too many of them. So I reckon if you get around the farms, you just might see some other things that might not be, um, you know, as evident on the sale when they do tend to start to look a little bit, a little bit all the same after a while. Yeah. Betting line's going to Jake's tomorrow. Uh, Jake yep. Stockton's getting ready for Sydney. When will you start on your horses for Melbourne? Um, oh, probably on the 1st of Feb, I reckon. Yep. Yeah, I usually do sort of uh, anywhere between eight to 10 weeks. Um, I'll sort of do a bit of education with them. They've they've been on the walker, so I'll bring them in and just spend a little bit of time in and out. And I like to give them a break halfway through the prep. Um, so yeah, probably first of Feb, I'd say they'll be in. Very yeah. good, Shane. Thank you. Don't forget anyone uh, nutrient.com.au. Uh, go to this online catalogues are there. Catalogues. I hope we'll have next Tuesday. Actually, on the twentieth, um, we'll have the catalogues out for Christmas uh, and give people some good good quality reading and get people to to get out there and, and go for that. Anyone want to get wants to get in touch with you though, best way to do it. Uh, 0487-764-966 or Twitter if you like that toxic environment to communicate. <laughs> <laughs> not many people do. Shane, thank you. Sorry about the, well, I don't actually, I'm not apologising because I don't think it's technically my issue, but it's one of those things that happens. Uh, good luck for the sales. We'll be doing more. Don't worry about that. I'll, yeah, be call, I'll call them past. We, want, we don't encourage people to call past. You hear it back as Marsh. Anyone wondering, uh, what are you, five minutes off the freeway to Ballarat? Yeah, that's right. I mean, we're very close to Geelong, Ballarat and Melbourne. So, yeah, just stop off back as Marsh. Oh, right near Melton in a bit of a harness racing trainers centre around here. So, yeah, it's a good spot. I want people to call in. Shane, thank you. Good luck at the sales, mate, but I'll be seeing you before that. Thanks, Paul.